Good morning. Welcome to you on this fifth Sunday in the season of Epiphany. Um, I pull up this uh, Chinese lantern. Uh, I know that many of you do know that this coming Saturday is uh, Chinese New Year or the Lunar New Year. So uh, it's a big, it's a big holiday uh, for many of us who do celebrate it. So, uh, but it's a it's a time of renewal, a time of joy and fest festival. Um, so whichever culture you are uh, in, um, we welcome you to celebrate uh, with all of us. Too. So it's a time of renew, time of uh, the old passing and the new has come. Uh, the new year of the, it's a new year of the dragon. Uh, you know, it just seems like yesterday that we just welcomed the year of the rabbit. But now we are welcoming the year of the dragon. So, so friends, let us uh, come together and join our hearts for the worship of God. Uh, we will be also celebrating communion later on, and also we will uh, install our newly elected uh, elders and deacons as well. This will come after the uh, sermon message. Will you please join me for the call to worship and respond by reading the yellow portion. God gathers us together in this place to the Lord. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. Sing praise to the Lord. God lifts up the downtrodden and casts out wickedness. Let us sing praise to the Lord. We sing to God with thanksgiving. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to follow Christ and spread the good news of your love for all people. Help us to become all things to all people that we might reach many with your good news. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 645. Sing praise to God who reigns above. Sing praise to God who reigns above the God of all creation, the God of power, the God of love, the God of our salvation. With feeling form, my soul is filled and every faithless murmur still to God all praise and glory. What God's almighty power has made God's gracious mercy keep it by morning glow all evening shade, God's watchful eye never sleepeth. Within the kingdom of God's might, Lo, Lord is just and all is right to God all praise and glory. The Lord is never far away, but through all grief the distressing and never present help and stay of peace and joy and blessing as with the mother's tender hand. God gently leads the 
chosen band to God all praise and glory. Thus all my soul, some wait alone, I sing aloud thy praises. That all may hear the grateful song, my voice unwearied raises. Be joyful to the Lord, my heart, both soul and body. Take your part to God all praise and glory. Amen. Please be seated. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to us since the beginning? Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Friends, let us place our faith and trust upon the Lord and seek God's mercy and forgiveness through our confession. Let us join our heart for the confession, prayer of confession. God, you are everlasting, the creator of all that is. Your understanding is beyond all measures. We confess to you that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. In your compassion, forgive us, for we place our hope in your steadfast love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. God takes these pleasures in those who place their trust in God's grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Friends, Christ, who is the living water, quenches our thirst and satisfies our hunger. For he is the light of the world, who illuminates the path of righteousness for us to follow. Friends, let us share Christ's loving presence and peace that surpasses all of our understanding with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let us turn to our neighbor and exchange signs of peace to one another. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 23. Here now the reading of God's word. Paul wrote, If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an abrogation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. 
What then is my reward? Justice. That, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge. So as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I may win more, I may win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I may win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I may win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I may win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might, by my by all means, save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 30. This is a continuation of the stories that we've been following through the uh, Gospel of Mark. As soon as they left the synagogue, Jesus and his disciples entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the ne- he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him then in the morning while it was still very dark he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed and Simon and his companions hunted for him and when they found him they said to him Everyone is searching for you. And Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. So he went throughout Galilee, proclaimed the message in their synagogues, and cast out demons. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. You notice there's a change in my title. Uh, Originally, I was going to use the title, Woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. But then I want to, later on, I switch to a different title, uh, Becoming All Things to All People. But either one, it will work as well. In the, la- in the gospel lessons that we just read from Mark, we were continuing to follow the lesson, following the ministries of Jesus of, with his newly recruited disciples. Last week, if you recall, we read how Jesus cast out a demon-possessed man in the synagogue as one of his first public acts of miracle. Not only did he perform this exorcism act before all the religious leaders, and, but he also did it on the Sabbath. Jesus became an, almost an instant celebrity around town, around the region, 
Everywhere he and his disciples went, a crowd would follow. Anxiously, waiting to see what he might do next. As you would expect it, the crowd would bring in many those who were sick and those who were possessed with demons and, and hoping that Jesus would heal them, relieve them from the evil spirit. Despite his fame and popularity, Jesus did not turn these folks away. Especially those who were living on the margin of society. Those who were voiceless. The power, the poor, the widows, and the orphans. And those who were sick physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Part of Jesus' earthly mission was to bring the gospel of salvation to where the people were by demonstrating what it means to be served, not, not what it means to serve and not to be served. This is a grassroots movement, as you would probably today's terminology. It's, he went after the people where they are. Jesus spoke their language, understood their culture, and listened to what they had to say. Just as, as we read earlier from the Apostle Paul, as describing his mission that was emulated by Jesus' mission, Jesus' mission by becoming all things to all people. Jesus made the gospel relevant and relatable to the people while not making any compromise for the integrity itself. As we read also in our scripture earlier, Paul's letter was writing, Paul was writing to this beloved church in Corinth. It was a letter of practical practice and very relatable, a heart-to-heart -heart message of mutual love and encouragement to this group of early Christians. In my opinion, the core of Paul's message could be summed up this way. That is, proclaiming the gospel is not just something that we do, but it is our way of life. It is the foundation of our belief and the essence of who we are as followers and disciples of Christ. In simple terms, we shall make this as part of our everyday living. We're called to be seven-day Christians, not just one day of the week when we come to church. Furthermore, we're not called just to we are not only to care about the individual's physical well-being, but also their spiritual well-being as well. As we read in Paul's letter, he described our calling and our mission as by becoming all things to all people. For the purpose of blending in, reaching out and connecting with those around us. How many of you have talked to your neighbor this week? Nowadays it's a very rare occasion. But Jesus did what he, what he did was a grassroots movement trying to reach out to the people around him. Interestingly, in the New Living Translation, it uses the term finding a common ground instead of becoming. Finding a common ground. What do we have in common to the person sitting next to you? Can you think of five things that you have in common? I think I like that translation better. Finding a common ground. Although not everyone is equipped or gifted the same way, yet we seek to find what we do have in common. It's about making the connection 
and making it relevant for the people. By becoming all things to all people, by no means suggests that the gospel message is to be watered down or our faith is to be compromised. That's not true. As part of God's vision, we are to embrace one another, even among those whom we may have our differences with. We may have differences in opinion and perspective or disagree with one another. That's okay. It's okay to have our differences. We can still be church. We can still be a collective body of Christ. As we strive to have a mutual win-win situation, a mutual respect, understanding, rather than a win-lose, or I, I am right, you're wrong, that kind of approach. That's not what we are called to do. In the context of Paul's message to the Corinthians church, Paul was encouraging the people to build bridges and establishing this mutual trust among this diverse community. After all, what they had in common was their belief in Christ. They were all fellow believers of Christ. Isn't that enough? Paul exercises bicultural Jewish and Roman citizenship, the, the background, in order to connect with as many people as he could. Many people both as Jews and Gentiles alike. That's why he said, to a Jew, I became a Jew, and to a Gentile, I became a Gentile. Paul did not mean that he would Water down the gospel. Those who, for those who were, those were the circles of people whom Paul must work with, for the sake of reaching out to them. In order that they may he may win some. I think at the end he also captured this. He did it all. For the sake of the gospel. So that he may share, in its blessing. He's not doing this for himself. He's doing this. He's doing this for the gospel of Christ. You can see that Paul was very much comfortable with his own skin, while maintaining his focus of mission and building trust and relationship with others, for the sake of Christ and Christ's message of salvation. Notice that he didn't expect everyone would be saved. He just said, in order to win some. Not that he claimed to have the full authority or power to grant someone their salvation. After all, that authority belongs to God and not by our human nature. But Paul had hope and expectation for them, at least, offering them the opportunity to hear the message of the gospel. How would they believe if they're not being preached upon or heard the gospel? The seed of the gospel still needs to be scattered, and we shall make our lives as the breeding ground and the harvest field for the advancement of the gospel. That's what the gospel calls for us. Through the spirit of healing and reconciliation. As we strive to build bridges that connect us and not walls or barriers that divide or separate us. Jesus broke down all these cultural, social, economic, gender, religious barriers by becoming all things to all people to a point that he was willing to lay down his own life for the sake of all humanity. Through our common belief 
in Christ's sacrifice and resurrection, we found our mutual mutuality in faith by the Holy Spirit. By the virtue of our baptism, God has claimed us and adopted us as God's sons and daughters. God will ultimately hold us accountable at the end in all that we do and all that we say. And we do it all for the sake of the gospel. For God will give us the strength and the opportunity to proclaim and to be witness of God's abounding hope and steadfast love. Furthermore, we are all called to be on God's mission team in order to serve others. In verse 16, Paul gave us a stern warning if we fail to honor our calling. Woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. Paul literally took it upon himself as his own obligation or necessity of his calling. That's sort of like Paul making a sworn statement or proclamation before others. And he even challenged others as well, including us today, to do likewise. Woe to us if we do not proclaim the gospel. In his other letter to the early church in Philippi, Paul also wrote, Whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus our Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things. And I consider them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Friends, God has equipped us and called us to engage in this ministry of healing and reconciliation as we strive to be the servant leaders as emulated by Christ throughout his ministry. When we serve others, we come to see things from others' perspective and not ours. Even Jesus, who took it upon himself as the servant king, humbly came to serve and not to be served. Just as he administered the Last Supper right before that, what did he do? He washed the disciples' feet. He knelt down on his feet and washed the disciples' feet. If you recall in our gospel lessons, when Jesus came to visit Simon's house, his mother-in-law was very sick, right? As soon as Jesus came in, he, he noticed her. He took her by the hand and he lifted her up. And her fever had left her. And he re she regained her strength. Notice what she did after, right after that? The woman wasted no time and was back on her feet once again, doing what she felt was called to do by serving others. The word serving in Greek is the same, shared the same root as ministering or deaconating or becoming a deacon. The, the, the Greek word is diakome. So it's serving, ministering, and becoming a deacon or serving other is synonymous to one another. Simon's mother-in-law was the recipient of God's mercy and healing. So she paid it forward. She paid it forward by serving others.
Simon's mother-in-law knew her role and her calling in society. Even though her name was never mentioned at all, that's irrelevant. She doesn't need a title to serve others. Many biblical scholars even consider her as the one of the first deaconess to be mentioned in the New Testament. As she demonstrated her faithfulness and her selflessness in serving and caring for others before herself. In the same way, God has also called each one of us here today. And he, God has gifted us with many talents, gifts, and compassions, and willingness to serve others in various capacities according to our abilities. As Paul wrote, For there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities. But it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is giving the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The one is giving through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirit. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. Friends, God has invited us to take part of this gospel of healing and reconciliation. No one shall be left alone, feeling abandoned or, or neglected by others as we engage in this process of life transformation and renewal, renewal together. We are to exemplify our lives worthy of the gospel. And it all begins by being accountable to one another through our actions, through our speech, conduct, and even our thoughts. May we continue to seek Christ first by committing ourselves in prayer, seeking God's guidance and leadership in all that we do and in all that we say by becoming all things to all people. Let us make the gospel relevant, not only in our lives, but more importantly, in the lives of others. For we are called to be the salt and light of the world and be agents of, trans agents of transformation and of influence towards others. Thanks be to God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now respond by singing hymn number 720, Jesus Calls Us.
Jesus calls us over the turmoil of our lives whilst restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice sounded, saying, Christians, follow me. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store, from the shadow that would keep us, saying, Christians, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of peace, still he calls in cares and pleasure, Christians love me more than these. Jesus calls us by thy mercy, Savior, may we hear thy call. Give our hearts to thy obedience, serve and love thee, best of all. Amen. Please be seated. As I mentioned earlier, that today uh, we will be installing uh, the new elected officers. Uh, we have uh, three officers who uh, need to be installed. Uh, Paul Wine is not here with us; he's on vacation, and so. But I'm going to call upon uh, Maida Molina to come, and also David Duong to come. Uh, she was elder. Uh, Maida was uh, elected as elder for the class of 2027, and David uh, was selected as deacons for the class of 2027. And I will ask uh, Ray to, uh, to act on behalf of the congregation. You may follow along uh, on the, the insert. Uh, I will ask a series of constitutional questions, and I will invite the, the deacon and the elder to respond accordingly. This is for both uh, Maida and for the elder and the deacon. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, acknowledging Him Lord of all and Head of the Church, and through Him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yes, I do. Do you accept the script? Do you accept the Scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by the Holy Spirit, a unique and authoritative witness? To Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Yes, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and not and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Yes, I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of the Scripture and be continually guided by our confession? Yes, I will. Will you be governed by our church's <laughs> policy and will you abide by its obedience, uh, discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? I will. Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? I will. Do you promise to further the peace unity and purity of the church. I do. Will you pray for and seek 
to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. And for the elder, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. And for the deacon, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the, to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Addressing the congregation with these questions, do we, the members of the church, accept Maida Molina as ruling elder and David Duan as deacon, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? Do we agree to pray for them? Let us pray. Gracious God, we, you call men and women to serve in various capacities and roles. You have gifted us with many gifts and talents. We ask upon your blessings upon those who are standing before us and who have responded to your call, that they may serve you faithfully and joyfully in all that they do. Give them wisdom, give them love, and give them the passion to serve you and to serve others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, you are now ruling elder and deacon of the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Whatever you do, in word and in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father. They, they have been ordained as elders and deacons, but I think it's always good to uh, uh, remind our calling. So for those who have been also uh, serving as deacons and elders, this is a yeah, good reminder of what the vow that we pledge, the, the pledge that we made, not just, not just to those who are here, but more importantly, these are the vows that we make to God. Um, uh, those who are ordained as deacons and el as elders, you are ordained as for life. Um, and this is a lifelong calling. So uh, please let us extend uh, our welcome and continue to work together with those who are uh, elected as elders and deacons. Now is the time that we will um, check in with one another. If you have any prayer concerns or joys and thanksgivings, we may lift it up as well. Any specific prayer concerns? Uh, yes, Carol? Yeah, I'd like to ask a prayer for my friend Cynthia Anderson. She's a visiting Mormon brother. I'm sorry? And who was the other, the second one? Uh, After Peggy. And her son, Eddie. Okay. Uh, yes, Neda? Yes, 
Your, your daughter-in-law? Aunt. Aunt? Uh, aunt, yes. Aunt, okay. And, and what was what was her prayer? Was, um, third stage uterine cancer. Third stage uterine cancer. She had she had. She was just diagnosed. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, incidentally, I I I checked in with Ellery uh, this week. Um, she shared uh, with me that uh, she, uh, you know, she has some issues with her eyes. Um, I think she had a major eye operation a few months ago, and now she's awaiting uh, for another uh, transplant, a cornea transplant. Um, so continue to pray for her. Uh, pray that um, the right donor may come along or the opportunity. I don't know how long the waiting list uh, there is. She, her, her eye situation uh, is in need of a cornea transplant. Uh, pray for Ellery. Uh, yes, uh, Jay? That's for Ken's mom. Yeah, she's in the hospital, hospital right? Yeah, I, I did exchange a couple of messages with him earlier this week. Okay. Continue to pray for um, Ken and Ken's sister also, right? They're, they're Ken's family and Jay, of course. Any other? Not then let's, let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you once again to listen to your voice. Keep our minds focused upon you and you alone, Lord, and, and not be distracted by what's around us. Keep our eyes and our hearts focused as we, the message that you reminded us this morning that we may become all things to all people for the sake of the gospel. Keep us reminded of what our mission is all about, what we are called to do as we witness by those men and women who step up responding to their call to serve as deacons and elders. May you continue to grant us wisdom and endurance. Continue to give us guidance in, in supporting those around us. Help us to be the salt and light of this world and be the hands and the feet of your gospel. We pray for those who are around us, those who may be recovering from various health concerns. At times we may seem that we are helpless, but we know that we can always depend upon you and ask and seek for your guidance, for your healing and comfort. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, for Cynthia, who have lost her brother.
and for others who have been diagnosed with various illnesses who are on a road to recovery. Continue to pray for Peggy for her recovery from her stroke, for Mather's daughter-in-law who has recently been diagnosed with cancer. We pray for her uh, treatment that she would be ex receiving soon. Uh, continue to pray that you would bring out the, the necessary help that she needs. We pray for her elderly also for her eye situation and we pray that she would soon be able to receive a uh, transplant uh, that the right donor may come along and she would be able to regain her sight. Continue also we pray for Ken's mom and for her illness and that she is in the hospital and we pray that uh, continue to pray for her, uh, her family, uh, for Ken and for uh, her sister and for Jane and also for Ken's dad as well. Uh, we know that she's uh, the anchor and the soul of the family. We pray that you would uh, be with the family during this time of difficulty and challenge knowing that you are in their midst that you will continue to lead them and guide them. Well, we lifted up all these concerns that we name and those that, are, that we cherish in our hearts, for you know them already, and you will continue to manifest your will according to your purpose. All of that we pray in Jesus' name. Who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For the offering, I invite you to please uh, use the two offering plates in the back table. Uh, on the first Sunday of uh, Communion Sunday, we have two offerings. One is the regular weekly offering, and also uh, the other one is for the Deacon's Benevolence Offering. We invite you to please give generously as you can. Uh, also, uh, you will see there's an envelope in the... In the uh, order of worship. Uh, that's for the per capita. The per capita is, uh, you and I, you know that, that we are part of our, the Presbyterian Church. Uh, we are part of the larger Presbytery, the Synod, and also the General Assembly. And each, being a member of congregation, we are to, uh, to support the ministry of the larger church. Uh, the, the church is being bill accordingly based on the number of members that we have. Uh, the, the per capita is the amount that the, bill, the church is built, being built for based on each person that we reported as members. So this year our per capita is 4625. Um, there is also a basic mission support uh, portion uh, that is a $11.60. Um, so the envelope is for you to, to use. You can bring it home and then either bring it all once next week or you can bring it all as installment. And uh, Either way, the church would have to pay this in, uh, amount. So we ask the, each member to give uh, accordingly if they can. Okay. Our, the session will be meeting tomorrow. Uh, you shall... Uh, you should have received all the. Uh, you should have received the proposed agenda minutes and also the meeting link at seven, uh, seven p.m. tomorrow. Okay. Our Wednesday evening Bible study will continue this week, um, Wednesday at seven thirty. Um, we are on chapter ten and eleven. Okay. 
Um, next week, we will have a guest speaker. Uh, the Reverend Rosemary Napoli will be with us uh, next week. So uh, I will not be here. Uh, so there will not be a Zoom transmission next week, only in, in person worship next week. In a moment, we will be celebrating communion. So let us prepare our hearts by singing the communion hymn. Number 525, let us break bread together. Welcome to the Lord's table of grace and blessing. For God is the only host, and we are all his invited guests of this heavenly feast. This is a table of welcome and embrace as we invite those who come to experience God's presence around us and within us. We have come not because we are righteous, but because we are in need of God's grace that is abundantly poured out before us and shed for our salvation. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Bright, shining God, inner light of all faithful souls, we celebrate your gifts of love, creation, and art. We rejoice that we have made us in your image and call us to live in your limitless life. You bring peoples and leaders to the dawns of your rising. You sent your only Son, our morning star, to light a way in our night and lead us to justice and peace. Your Holy Spirit shines good news into our lives. Each day, great you call to feed the hungry, 
bring recovery of sight, liberate the oppressed, heal the brokenhearted, and bind up their wounds, and keep watch for the dawn of your commonwealth on earth. For all of this, we give you thanks. O oh God, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Every time you do this, in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this cup, you do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray the prayer of communion after. Let us pray. By your spirit, we ask your blessings upon partaking this bread and this cup, that they may become for us the presence of Christ among us. Shine your light and your love on the offering of our lives. Enlighten us that we may be your people, the body of the risen Christ, the light of the world, set apart to serve this earth that you have made. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
We praise you now and forever. Eternal life. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 707. Take thou our minds, dear Lord. benediction. May the Spirit of Jesus take your hands and lift you up so that you may be of service to others. And may we become all things to all people for the sake of the gospel so that we may share in its blessings. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we meet again. And all of God's people say, Amen. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love spending flowing over you. Smile that threatening grace before you. God be with you till we meet again. 
Please be seated. Friends, may you have a blessed week and be a blessing to others.